Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem last stone wait. So this is an easy-ish problem I would say, but we're also going to be solving the second version of this problem, last stone wait 2, probably tomorrow or the next video that I upload. So the context is that we're given a collection of stones. Each stone has a positive integer weight, so greater than zero weight. And each turn, we can choose the two heaviest stones and then smash them together. Now, what happens when we take the two heaviest stones and mash them together? Well, in one case, if they are the exact same weight, both of the stones are going to be destroyed. If they are not the exact same weight, then the smaller stone is going to be totally destroyed, but the larger stone is going to basically be the difference between the weights. So... For example, let's say we had two stones, five and four. This is the weight of the stones. They're not equal, so when we smash them together, the smaller stone, four, is going to be destroyed, and the larger stone is going to be basically a five minus four. That's what its remaining weight is going to be. So, you know, we take the we start out with two stones, and then we get reduced to a single stone. The smaller stone gets destroyed. The larger stone is going to be five minus four. That's a one. So that's kind of what happens when we uh, smash two stones together. At the end, there is going to be at most one stone left. And it could technically even be zero stones if there aren't any left. So what do we want to return? We want to return the weight of whatever stone happens to be left over. If we don't have any stones left over, then we can just return a zero as the default value. So I will say that this problem is somewhat straightforward. Let's take a look at one of the examples. And the reason this problem is straightforward is they gave us basically all the instructions and the information that we need. And all we really have to do is kind of simulate these instructions. We don't actually have to find a clever way to solve this problem. We just have to simulate what they told us. That's pretty much the best we can do. What did they tell us to do? They told us to always take the two heaviest stones and then smash them together. Together. How are we going to get, suppose we had a bunch of stones like this, how are we going to get the two heaviest stones? Of course, we could sort the array. That's one solution. But even if we did sort the array, you'll find that it's a valid solution. But you know, when we're taking the two heaviest, seven and one, we're smashing them together. And then we're going to basically be introducing a new stone, right? So eight minus seven is going to be the new stone one. And then we're going to, to maintain the sorted property of this uh, list. We're going to have to insert this in order, which might be a little bit annoying, uh, but I think it is a valid solution. But another solution is going to be using a heap, not a min heap in this case, but we're actually going to be using a max heap because we're going to be taking the max uh, stones each iteration. In order to take this input array and transform it into a max heap is actually an O of n time operation. Uh, with the heapify function, but every time that we want to actually get the maximum from here, that's going to be a log n operation. And how many times potentially are we actually going to need to get the maximum from here? n times, so n multiplied by log n, that's what's going to be the overall time complexity of this solution. Now, how is it actually going to work? Well, basically, as I mentioned, we're going to simulate. So we're going to assume we have a max heap here. We're going to get the largest stone. It's going to be an eight. We're going to get the second largest stone. It's going to be a seven. We're going to smash them together. We have eight and seven smashing them together. Seven is smaller, so this is going to be destroyed. Eight is going to be transformed into a one now. So we can let's just introduce another one to this list. And we're going to continue the simulation, right? We're going to get the now two biggest stones. It's going to be a four and a two. What's going to happen with four and two? Well, two is smaller, so that's going to be destroyed. Four is going to basically be four minus two, which is going to be two. So we can insert that into our max heap. So now we're going to insert a two. Now we are left with, it's a little bit messy, but we're left with a two, a one, and a couple ones. So when we smash these two together, we're actually going to be left with a single one. I won't draw that because I think at this point you probably get the idea. Then we're left with three ones. What's going to happen with these three ones? Well, two of them are going to be smashed together. 
together and then we're left with a single one left and we have nothing left we have no other stones to smash this one with so when everything is said and done we will be remaining with a single stone so we can go ahead and return uh one as the return value and, you know, it could have been a little bit different. It could have been something like, okay, we're left with two ones, then they get smashed together, and then we have nothing left. So then if we had nothing left, we could return a zero. But that's not the case in, in this example. We do end up returning a one, as you can see down here. This problem is pretty straightforward if you have a decent understanding of heaps and their time complexities. In this case, the only tricky part for us in the code is going to be Python does not actually have max heaps. So we're going to have to use a min heap to basically simulate a max heap. And you can do that by basically, you know, assume we had some kind of heap. We would want eight to be the maximum value. And then suppose we had some other values, three and five. But this is how a, max, a real max heap would work. But if we are actually implementing this with a min heap, it's going to be the opposite of this, but we still want eight to be the, the value that we get from the root. So what we're going to do is actually have negatives. We're basically going to multiply every value in the heap by negative one so that the minimum, which is eight, negative eight in this case is going to be popped when we want the maximum and then when we pop this we're going to get negative eight but we can just convert it we can get the absolute value of this and then just convert it back into an eight that's kind of how we're, unfortunately we're gonna have to do this in python in other languages i think you can just get a regular max heap but i think that's all the information we need now we can hop on into the code but before i do let me just give you a very quick word from our sponsor for today interviewing.io if you want to get hired at top tech companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon, then you need to check out interviewing.io. You'll practice realistic coding interviews with senior engineers who will give you detailed feedback on exactly what you need to work on. They have the largest network of vetted and experienced tech interviewers in the world, so you can book an interview with as little as 24 hours notice. And the best part, you don't even have to pay until you get hired please check out the link in the description below for more details okay so now let's get into the code like i said we're going to be writing the simulation for this problem and so the first thing we want to do is put all of these stones into a max heap now python does not have max heap so we're going to put these in a min heap but we're going to multiply every one of these values by negative one we're going to make them negative so in python what i'm doing right now is basically just going through every single stone and uh, putting it into a list uh, and multiplying each stone by negative one. I'm putting the negative of that stone in this list. And now I want to turn this list into a heap. So what I'm going to do is heap q dot heapify this stones. This is a linear time operation. So now we're good to go. Now we can start running the simulation. And remember, we want to continue this while the number of stones is greater than one. If we have one stone or if we have zero stones, that's when we can stop the simulation. But until until then, we are going to take the two largest stones. How can we get them? Well, we're going to pop from the min heap. We can do that like this. Heap Q dot heap pop from the uh, max heap, not min heap. So pop from stones and we can, that'll give us the largest and this will give us the second largest uh, stone. And remember, if the stones are equal, uh, that's basically we wouldn't have to do anything right we just remove these two stones from the heap and if they are equal weights then we don't really have to do anything we're not going to add them back to the heap we don't have to we don't have to do anything but in the other case if the second stone that we popped was less than the first stone that we popped and why am I saying second stone well because the second stone is going to have a smaller weight than the first stone or equal weight right because, it, because when we're popping the first one, that one is supposed to be the heaviest stone. But we, you know, we're doing th it this way. But remember, we made all the weights negative. So what we actually have to do is the opposite of this case. If second uh, is greater than first, suppose we popped, you know, this is kind of an example. Suppose the first stone had a weight of eight. In that case, it would have a value of negative eight. And the second one had a weight of seven. Uh, and the value would be negative seven in that case, then of course, negative seven is a greater value than the first stone, right? So that means 
basically this second is the smaller stone and we have to destroy second. And how are we gonna do that? Well, basically we already popped it from the heap so we don't actually have to destroy it. All we have to do is take the difference between these two and then add that back into the heap. Now, how are we gonna take the difference? First of all, a heap Q dot heap push is how we can actually add to the heap. So we're going to add to stones, whatever that value is. How are we going to get the value? Well, obviously the value in this case would be a one, right? If we took it eight, uh, subtracted seven from it, we'd be left with a one. How can we do that computation? Well, basically you can just take second subtracted by first. If that kind of confuses you, if these negatives and kind of that math confuses you, you can convert these into absolute values if you want. So, you know, you can take the first and second and convert them into the absolute value. Then the math will be straightforward. I don't really want to waste you know too much time writing that code out. And this kind of does make sense to me. So I'm just going to keep it short and concise. I'm just going to take second subtracted by first, which will give us the which will give us the weight that we want to add, right? We want to add a stone of weight one. But remember, in our heap, we are keeping track of negative values. So I would have to sub I would have to multiply this by negative one. Uh, the easier way to do this is just to take first subtracted by second which will give us the exact same thing. It'll give us the negative that value that we're looking for. It'll take the difference between these and that difference will be negative, right? We'll have first, which is negative eight, plus seven, which is gonna be a negative one, which is you know what we want in this case. So I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing, but basically this is our case. And that is the entire simulation code. Once we're done with that, we can go ahead and return whatever the value of the stone happens to be the remaining stone. So stone at index zero. But don't forget, we actually do have negative values, right? So when we return the value of that stone, we want to return the positive value. So we're going to take the absolute value of this stone. And also don't forget one last edge case. What if stones was empty, right? What if we didn't have any stone left in here? Well, uh, one way to handle that edge case is just to take, before we return, just say stones.append a zero. So in that case, if there's already a stone in this list, we'll, we'll end up returning that stone because it'll be at index zero. If there's not a stone, then we'll add this zero stone and then we'll end up returning that zero uh, instead. So this basically works out in all cases, which is what I'm getting at. So I hope this was helpful. As you can see, this solution does run and it is pretty efficient. Sometimes it's more efficient than other times. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. And I'll hopefully see you pretty soon when we solve the second version of this problem, Last Stone Wait 2, which is a much more difficult problem to solve.